Greetings. My name is Ben, aka Downsize It, and today I'm very pleased to be joined by a special guest, and that is Jesse, aka Valadian. And for those that don't know, he uh, most recently was featured on our joint live stream with Mercury Fleet Command for the Texas Open and the Warzone uh, Armada Tournament. And he had the Sloan Honor Girl list that won both tournaments. And also, he is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you're the, the brains behind the Armada mod on TTS, if that's correct. Yeah, yeah, I've created it and developed it. Uh, Excellent. Well, thank you for coming on the channel. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. I've uh, obviously, I've, I've watched a lot of your videos and commentary, uh, so it's nice to meet you in person. Well, I'm, I, there's multiple reasons why I'm excited for this. Is it, One is because I'd like to talk about the tournaments and your list. And uh, and you've already kind of given me a preview through some chatting how that that list has had a, a pretty uh, interesting evolution um, as you Absolutely. started conceiving it. And then uh, as we talk about that, I'd also like to talk about like tournament metas because this is something that myself and Social General Rob, we just don't know because we've I've only ever played in one tournament and we don't really follow that. And uh, there were some comments in the past couple live streams we did about people wondering if you you know uh if armada has stagnated if only the same lists always win and you uh had some disagreements on that i'd like to talk about that as well but first let's talk about uh, your lists um right. the uh i guess you could say now infamous sloniger list that has been devastating the houston area and uh, it's yeah, absolutely <laughs> yeah so well you know, let's start up uh early i've always been a sloan player um you know, if we go all the way back in history, uh, I got introduced to uh, Armada around 2015, 2016. Um, kind of saw it. That's actually what caused me to create the mod uh, on Tabletop Simulator to kind of learn more about it. Uh, my first competitive play was in 2017. Um, and so that was a local Houston uh, tournament. Um, and I later went to regionals and I flew a Fit2 uh, Sloan list. Uh, so it's Fit2, Gladiator. Um, and then, you know, pretty standard uh, MJ, uh, Mahler, Howell. This was back before you could have more than four aces. Uh, so I had Major Rhymer in there. Oh, um, nice. Pretty yeah. standard uh, sl uh, Sloan. Um, so you were, using, you were using Rhymer after he had the nerfs then? Uh, so well, was this, was this after the nerf or was this before the nerf? This may have been before nerf. I don't okay, know when gotcha. he was nerfed. Um, so I'm not sure how many and people were so, yeah, using that him after just, he got nerfed, but yeah. yeah, yeah, that was just all for reach, um, right. mostly. Yeah. It's really hard to fit him now because there's almost always four other aces you want other right. than him. Um, and so it, it did really well at my local store tournament. Um, I went to regionals and got my butt kicked, um, pretty good, <laughs> and soundly by other Sloan lists. Um, and uh, you know, it's it does well, but it really struggles with a really slow, predictable victory. Um, and, you know, you don't want your Admiral necessarily on it, but then you've got to put her in Risk and Gladiator, you know, flying into the side. So, um, challenging to play, it, it did okay. Um, then, I really haven't done competitive play since 2017, so it's just uh, end of last year I started getting back into things. Um, and the first in-person tournament would have been May uh, at Dragon's Lair in Houston. Um, and that's where I first introduced the Onager um, Sloan list. Um, so this uh, has most of the same components that I've been playing the last few times. Um, but, you know, Sloan always has a challenge. It has, you know, has to have a big squad screen because mm -hmm. of her ability. Yeah. But all that does is disable defense tokens. You've got to have something else come in and hit hard. So that was the idea behind like Gladiator and a Detached Bit 2. That was your, you know, punch in once they strip tokens. Well, Onager, in its nature of being a, probably a little cheap for what it does, um, <laughs> fits well into because yeah. usually a Sloan list is so hard to fit everything you need um, yeah. in a list because you need a carrier, something that hits hard, and your, you know, full squad screen. Um, so pretty standard, um, you know, Veterans Ordinance, uh, Onager. Um, a pretty standard uh this is the sits activation quasar with a uh, grint and an expanded um 
Uh, Grint is really super essential in recent metas uh, because of how much raid there is from Separatists. Um, when you come against a TF or a surprise attack, Grint is what lets you just shrug it off. You, That's you lose fantastic. One. You can just ignore raids then exactly. for the exactly. squads. That's awesome. Yep. Um, and so there's often, uh, there's two parts. So I also have Radar, which is a pretty standard lifeboat for Sloan. Um, I don't think I've ever shot with her or had it shot in any of the 15 games I've played it. Um, it just flies over there and flies off into oblivion. And I have uh, to say, that was inspiring to me when I first saw that at the Texas Open when we were flashing it, because I just thought that's actually ingenious. One, having Corvus with Sloan is just great. Yep. But then having that as a lifeboat, just to keep Sloane safe, because, you know, me, when I normally play Sloane, I have to put her on my ISD, too. Yeah. Always in danger. But for a tournament play, that's a smart thing to do, because then you don't even have to worry about her getting killed. You'll always have her benefit. <laughs> exactly. And, and so that, you know, that uh, in tournament play, it's all about maximizing points, right? You want to average seven to eight points a game. Um, you have to have a list that can 10-1 some people. Mm -hmm. But then you also want to list that when you go against your hardest counter, maybe against, against the best player in the tournament, you have to be able to get a five right. against that. And that's right. the, the right. lifeboat is essential to that, you know, especially playing uh, Jason Hughley. Um, he's uh, always had such strong lists. He's such a strong player. And I think every time I played him, I've lost both my Onager and my Quasar. Um, gotcha. And even then... I'll, I'll come with a, a anywhere from a 5 to a 50 point spread because I, I usually will take something bid down with me. I just right. don't quite table him. Uh, and the Raider and all the squads that end up staying on the table. Um, That's still a lot of know, points. Gives me that. Yeah, exactly. That's still a lot exactly. of points on the table. Yes, and so that's been that's been huge. Um, also, the having both Corvus and Grant, I will often play surprise attack. I don't care. Um, I'll just drop Raider on the station, relocate it, and take my raid um, and let Grant wave it away. Um, and that's actually so I love surprise attack. <laughs> that's actually amazing. And now that you mentioned that, because who cares about Corvus? Because you get to redeploy afterwards. Exactly. So, yeah. So that's it amazing. takes. You know, they they <laughs> still get to slow down a few activations, but compared to a lot of other reds, um, that's not a bit. You know, I'd much rather play surprise attack than asteroid tactics or infested fields or any of those that. Um, kind of really mess up how the game happens right yeah and i'm sure yeah. most opponents don't expect you to take it exactly no they, they kind of throws don't. them off i imagine exactly because not many people have high mobile you know sometimes uh, some of the separatist lists with like a trench on a hard cell or something will happily deploy him pointed backwards and run away um yeah, i saw not, Kel not do that at the they lost the lone star open which i thought was interesting um, yeah exactly so. Yeah, that's the only people that are really take surprise attack generally. Um, but, you know, so this was in May. I took a fairly standard uh, Sloan line. So this is a, t a 10 squad, um, bunch of interceptors, triple interceptor, um, you know, Mahler Howl Runner, um, which does okay. The issue is I ran against two things, uh, PDIC and uh, Separatist Flat. Yeah. Um, so that was the the final uh, match against Juan uh, Duran. Um, ran a fairly standard um, TF separatist list um, with like four vultures or something. So he had a token screen enough to slow me down for a round, um, and he ended up beating me uh, and just shredded my my uh, wing um, with all of his flak. Uh, and I really couldn't do a lot of damage to him. You know, I threw everything at his Providence, and he can just re-roll all of them. Um, yeah. It halves all of Sloan damage. Um, and it already is kind of weak uh, as it is. Um, so that got me thinking, you know, what is the, the answer to that? Um, and what do I change? So, um, and I came tied primarily to the realization, I don't need to flip more tokens. I need more damage on target. Um, and so... Right. Uh, and, and the idea is having more... Th right now, this list primarily has one threat. It's been on a trip. And so, so as long as that, they that, mit mitigate... Yeah, 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 as long as they avoid that, they're fine. You flip all the tokens exactly. they want. You don't get yeah. by the honor gear, you know. Because that is yeah, actually maybe, a good Maybe point. they've got thermal yeah. shields, yeah. Um, and then they'll charge the Providence at the Onager. Um, this is also before I learned um, a very important thing about Onagers. Um, ABN always be navving <laughs> never put yes. any other 
command on an onager mm-hmm. ever mm-hmm. because uh, the nav will get you more damage it will save you from more damage um better than a confire or an engineering ever will um i yeah. never need a squad command because of toys and you have um, engine techs on that right now right now i do that was right, after so, right i I, yeah. Yeah, I thought i was missing that on this one but yes exactly yeah. so this was pre-engine techs um and uh you know conventional line so in may uh so when i came into uh tso um i still did not have engine techs but i uh introduced the fire sprays um so getting rid of hal runner and mauler um going with the suntra tell combo which is just great uh, because mm-hmm. the big weakness with the fire spray is that you start to really weaken your anti-swat ability um, significantly. And so that's where soon to tell, I, I may not win the swat war, but I won't let you run over me. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because you're going to spend two, three rounds shooting at soon to tell instead. Yeah. Um, and that, that became really critical against small um, wings. So if you've ever put four of them together, a deployment, I'm going to toss soon to tell across the board with a uh, uh, squall and lock you down and then let the rest of my wing go, go do whatever go do what wants. they need to do yeah exactly yeah um, that was also when i just i think watching t at your txo list was it, i would say it was inspiring because i there's so many combos that i saw on your list that i never even considered one was the soon tell. tail i didn't even know that was a combo i yeah. know I, I i i tried I've, i don't know if you watched the video where i tried it once against robbie I, i'm never doing it again unless it's for a tournament prep because that is it such an be, impressive it won't combo. be friends <laughs> no, it won't. Uh, uh, but then it was uh, the fire sprays as your damage uh, output because yeah, it, you know so that it looks generally like, goes against conventional wisdom right yeah because you can't use them with sloan but exactly. it looks like you have enough token flipping now you get the double bomber that is a perfect complement to Merrick. You basically have with Merrick Gen, you have four double bombers Merrick. going. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I've got double so. Merrick um, for just slightly less. Um, yeah. Now, Merrick, of course, is the so good at flipping tokens. Um, amazingly good. I almost always go to a crit, reroll again to fish for accuracies yeah. um, for him. Uh, and so, yeah, you've got five ships that can flip tokens, uh, and then you've got three rogue. Uh, the big advantage there is that one of the weaknesses you've got a single carrier with a single quasar and no gazantes um and so right. the road really helps to compensate that before i would actually like toss in half of them and then the next round like toss the other five you know when i had 10 uh squad activations right um and so this way i, I throw all eight on round one uh hopefully into the face of something um and every round i'll be able to put all eight on target um which is really critical everything is doing its work um every round um yeah there's a few other like little um you know you got of course cataclysm with hondo um i was also running uh a titus uh for changing speed that would actually combo with um both surprise attack and rift ambush um so surprise attack they deploy at half speed and then i can titus them down so if it's a starhawk it's going to start at speed zero it can't wait. It has to right. activate. Right. Uh, yeah. Same thing for SSD. You know, you can't wait. You have to activate. Otherwise, I'm going to land everything on you with no defense tokens. Yeah. Um, same thing with a uh, rift ambush. Uh, this happened in several games where um, generally I would want to speed people up. Um, that I'll take someone on the inside. You know, I've you know used my deployment advantage to kind of deploy to the side of them. Um, mostly because I don't want to face their entire list. I want to just go marching down the list, face them one by one and take them all down and so and using what I'll do those is I'll dust fields them. to yeah i think one that rob and i watched you play i forget i think it was the one that he had no squads it was providence and two recce sense something like that exactly yeah that was and, one the and, 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 and basically and that was just executed to perfection because he, basically the entire game he had no shot and then he came at you one ship at a time across the dust fields which is perfect for exactly. you to then hit him so that was the rematch it. against Juan. he beat yeah. me in may uh with okay. his list but he adjusted his list to be more anti-ship and got rid of the squads uh, and, you know, went to the double record set. Um, and I, my list was more anti-him. Right. <laughs> more anti-all yeah. ship. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> so in a rematch, it was, uh, it was, it would have been something very, very hard for, you know, in the beginning, just our, our list, it was kind of predetermined what the outcome of that game was going to be. Yeah. Um, it was really hard. He had no deployment advantage, so I could deploy. Even putting himself in the middle, I would have been to one side or the other. Um, 
and would have been able to uh, kind of replicate that. Also, doing the Rift Ambush makes it very... I really love Rift Ambush for squad list. Yes, um, yeah. Because that allows you to basically toilet bowl the game. Because they can't turn into you because of the big giant mall in the middle. Uh, and you can just run around the circle and they... Whichever way they go, you go the go other the way. The opposite direction. Uh, yeah. And you let the the squads don't care. They love to jump on the mall and and jump off of it and and stuff like that. So it's a big great screen for the squad. Um, so it's it's a great overall list for um, for anything with squads in general. And so uh, one thing I've, I've noticed with a, if, um, with that before you go on to the other iterations, just the foundation of putting Sloan on a Corvus on on yes. Corvus. One thing that I think is, I just thought about this, it really helps you, one, because you don't have a Gazanti, it's almost yep. impossible to table you. Yep. And if someone does, it, like, you know, imagine, you know, if I was running like a no squad list and I saw Sloan, I'd just make a beeline for their carriers, try to take those yep. out as fast as possible. And exactly. Sloan would probably be on one of them in most lists. But with your yep. list, if I do that, you still have yep. three rogues, your squads are probably exactly. already in position, and I'm not getting to Sloan because it's on Corvus skirting the board on the other side of the board. So you yeah. still you haven't lost your firepower, just maybe some of the efficiencies with activations. But sniping the yeah. Quasar isn't the death knell that it is in a lot of Sloan lists, which I think is interesting. And, and that's that's part of the list is that um, a big part of the list is that it gives the opponent a lot of hard choices, and it makes my choices pretty simple. Um, by the way, for my commands, it's always squad on the Quasar. It's always nab for the Onager and it's always nab for um, the uh, Corvus. Um, I, I never anything. change my defense. So <laughs> yeah. I just stack them again. I never yeah. have to think about it. I'm reducing my cognitive load so that I can focus on where am I going to put things. Predicting right. where they're going to be. That's all my thoughts. are not planning token shenanigans or command shenanigans. I'm just focused on where do I need to be, where are they going to be. Um, which you know that's you know that's enough to think about there just right the exactly um, yeah. and so that's that's huge um the same thing with titus and cataclysm it's all about right at speed zero people there's so many opportunities for them to make mistakes that they have to make sure that they don't and a good player won't um but there's traps set you know if you if you activate too fast um early on and slide into my cataclysm black range on speed you know, range you know, turn zero uh you're gonna have a bad day um yeah right off the bat um and so there's a few that i've popped providences on round one throwing all squads stripping braces so they can't thermal and onagers killing it in the side um i've killed an onager on round one doing the same against kaylorn um uh and so there's just traps that if mistakes happen um it could go really bad very quickly for the opponent right um, while also making it very hard for them to focus. I always tend to deploy Quasar and Onager pretty far apart, um, so they've kind of got to pick one. You know, you get one yeah. or the other. Uh, certain lists can actually threaten both. Um, you know, especially like I've had like uh, going against Ian's list. So he like you know he runs a lot of like all ship lists, junk bucket and stuff. Um, like he'll have a Gladiator is a perfect Quasar killer. Um, oh yes. So yeah, yeah gl gladiator slam, you know, and it'll just vaporize the quasar, and then they can focus the bid firepower on the onager or something. Right. Uh, so that happened in Houston as well. Um, and um, so then, you know, from then, uh, so I, I did end up winning uh, TSO. I've done only a few minor adjustments since then. I found that I didn't need it expanded because um, that gives me six activations. I only have five non-rogue, um, so I saved myself some points there. Um, Titus shenanigans was more about the opponent playing into it than um, which when they did, you know, there's some bonus, um, but you know, to kind of save and shave points, um, I wanted to add engine tests was a big thing. Right. Um, give that hyper mobility to the onager um, so that it could get out of there and run away uh, and also crank around do speed five around the rift um, which is and incredible uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and that engine tech move man it just really gives you that extra ability to line up that narrow arc for the ignition shot exactly so, so, yeah, so when you're in a cloak, you go speed you... two yeah it could be speed one to speed four yeah and you don't know which one is going to be yeah um and it makes it if because you know Obviously, the a death of an onager is someone gets into your side. Well, with this, with engine text and you nabbing all the time, you could actually, you know, flip it on them. 
which yeah. normal yeah, and I, I did that on <laughs> on against the SSD at Warzone. You know, yes, that was speed incredible. Four, out <laughs> the gate, just like now you are never going to shoot me from your front ever. Yeah, um, yeah. And so same thing. It also makes it much more viable to go down to speed zero, which I did a few kind of speed zero clutch moves. Um, usually when you did there, it's kind of hard to get up out of there. But you know if you um, you know, you can jump to speed two, you know, basically with engine tets, so or if you've got a token yeah. straight to speed three, basically, uh, kind of launch out of there from uh, stopping. Um, and so that's been kind of essential, you know, giving me opportunity, you know, options uh, that I don't right. have to worry about planning too much and be like, oh, I meant to be plus one speed. Okay, we'll do engine tets. Um, and so again, you know, it's reducing the, you know, yeah, I make mistakes and so that kind of allows me to give those flexibility when I, when that happens well i've, I've um, noticed that with this list like because you're talking about its simplicity yeah and with the planning and everything is that it is extremely forgiving for error when making errors exactly um, for as me. opposed to the opposite <laughs> side of the spectrum i found i mean i think republic can be incredibly powerful but its yes. margin for error is so small because when you no. make that error then it almost just throws your entire game you have to play a perfect no. game for it to work <laughs> yeah, that, you know, actually, one of my biggest losses was against a all ship Republic list. Oh yeah, um, against Allen. Um, oh, was so it his double burner, double spot with all the consulars? Yeah, that one. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so that that was, I think, mostly me. Um, we I pit volatile deposits, um, and then I was so focused on threatening his two asteroids that he was going to farm with a consular, and I I split everybody and. Swads were just running across the table the whole game, not shooting anybody. Um, yeah, so it wasn't I, wasn't a very good game for me. <laughs> that's what I did too when I played him at LBO. I I got distracted and I chased the rabbit. I went after his mercy mission, which split my oh, fleet, yeah. and then he was able to take me out. It was a stupid move, but <laughs> my <laughs> onager ate mercy mission. Uh, so that's what I, I played the onager across mercy mission. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. and cataclysm right there. So he had to. No, I'm not going to sit on the asteroid. I've got a boogie right away, uh, right. and. He, I ended up getting a big black ignition shot on him. He jumped over me, and then I activated first and shot out the back and popped it. Um, and then, but then it was uh, it trying to the onager speed forward, escaping two venators, like trying to trap it. Uh, trying to, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I need to get that one on Discord. Uh, got some great screenshots from from that game. Um, yeah, and so you know, I think the only adjustments after that it was mostly. Um, Rift Ambush, uh, people started catching on to it and never playing it. Uh, um, so, uh, m you know, the first, m you know, back in uh, TXO, everyone pinned it. The, the people didn't realize how much value Rift Ambush. It gave me a perfect deployment of, you know, that I, I knew extremely well. Um, and I had ways that I adjusted it during certain fleets. And, and so, yeah, people started picking other things. Um, and so I ended up switching that one to Asteroid Tactics to give me more flexibility and, and token shenanigans. Um, I also took out, I think, Surprise Attack and put Most Wanted, um, because there are some lists that, uh, you know, Kuwat, uh, Flag should be like, yeah, okay, I'll deploy, you know, in the middle of the board, <laughs> point it straight at you and that. activate yeah. first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks, yeah, I'll do that. Um, and so, again, trying to make those, you want hard choices for the opponent. You want all of these to be equally bad for them. And most wanted, and you know, most wanted, I think is great. Like you talked about, surprise attack for you picking is great. Yeah. But I think most wanted as your mission is fantastic because again, no one's catching Corvus unless yeah. they try to chase it. But if they're doing that, they're not going after the meat of your fleet. Exactly. Now the weakness with most wanted is I only have one ship that's shooting other ships, so I'm only that getting is, one. You only dies. get the benefit. Yeah. That's true. Um. And but you know they're not gonna sh they're not getting any value because no one's shooting at Corvus ever. Yeah. Um, and the big thing is that often I, if I want to focus on one ship, I can almost always kill it. Um, it's very hard for the opponent to prevent that from happening unless they just turn it away and fly it alongside the side of the board and don't participate, which I'm still winning if they do that. Right. Um, so the, you know there's one example that we played most wanted with against the SSD, um, and that was basically his his line of thinking was. He was going to get shot in the back if he pits superior position, so that's not good. Yeah. Uh, asteroid tactics would have made it very challenging for him to approach me. I could have made a big screen of asteroid. Yeah. Um, and so his, his thought is, if he lives, most wanted plays in his favor. Um, because if, if the SSD dies, he's going to get like 10-1. Yeah. 
no matter yeah, what. It'll be a 10 to 1 no matter what happens. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was exactly. So, that was his line of thinking, and, you know, it was it was fairly close. Um, that, that was a fantastic game. We were... I mean, I don't. I, I think you. I don't know if you've watched the replay of that, but Rob and I thought no. the SSD had you, but then no. I think it was the round five or whatever. The honor guard got an incredible hit on it that was suddenly no. all these hit points were down, and then actually no. Michael actually messaged me because it, it was Michael, right? I Michael Lissy. Just think, so. think that was no. yeah. He messaged me later because he watched. He's like, so you and Rob were talking about round three and four. You didn't see my command. That's because I forgot to reveal one. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he did miss uh, one engineering. There, so yeah. there was in planning, I think it was round four or five. He was like, "What? Why do I have still four dials? I don't have a reset dial." Uh, and so that was a missed engineering. He did miss. Uh, yeah. Now, if you probably noticed it, the right at the end, I rolled a bunch of dice after the game had ended, mm -hmm. showing that I, you know, I had a. The, the remaining activations that I had from squads, I ended up killing with like the first squadron activation. Right. Uh, finished them. And it would have done another like five or six damage or something. So it's like you, you um, still had enough anyway with the remaining yeah, squads. Yeah, even if right? he had yeah. healed two um, cards, um, it, it would have been a struggle for him to still live um, yeah. with how they rolled. Um, it's just, yeah, it does so much. The big thing about the list is the Onager is not the biggest threat. Most people think it is. Um, and you know, I kind of mentioned it earlier when we were talking that it's really a ruse um, that everyone yeah. is so focused on the onager. These, you know, those Merrick, Jenden, and two fire sprays average like seven damage around. Yeah, it's, inc it's incredible amounts of damage they can put yeah. out. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's very yeah, hard it's you know, because they've already losing a lot of times. I'll slow away uh, redirects. Um, I'm almost always slowing away a redirect. Oh, um, same instead here. Instead of a brace. That, that is yeah. absolutely what I do, is because that way the, your yeah. damage is focused. Then uh, squads right. just punch through that yeah. hole. Yep. Um, and so, and yeah, so that that was a, the big thing, uh, is that, and that's where in earlier tournaments, I averaged two shots around with the Onager. Uh, round one, round two, and then I'll turn and run away um, and let him chase it into all the squads, and then the squads just go to town uh, right well so i thought it was really interesting because you know one thing you know as rob and i were watching both of these live streams and we mainly saw you because you were on top table a lot for both of those and interacting with people in the comments and <clears throat> you know a lot of people were you know talking about your list being you know op and broken and all that stuff can't be beaten but then we saw the you know, it didn't affect your winning the tournament, but your final match, you came up against a squad heavy list. And yeah. well, and it's with... funny, I almost always lost my final game. Yeah. In almost all tournaments, when I played one yeah. or you know, I played Kalorn on the final one, and, and that's really the counter, right? Yeah. So if you if you've got something that can shake off the shots of an Onager, that means it's a, a Starhawk or an SSD or something with thermals or whatever, and you've got a screen to lock down Sloan. I just, I don't have enough damage. Yeah. Yeah. At all. I've got one thing to poke you with, and uh, my squads are just going to do, you know, against your squad things. And yeah. so that's a basically, uh, that last game, you know, I, you know, once I, I looked at that, I was like, there's no way I can get a seven, which is what I, I needed an eight to beat him for the tournament, right. win the tournament. Um, and so that's why I kind of deployed, I, I deployed weird. We played asteroid tactics, had all the asteroids in the middle. Um, I've actually, I haven't, I've watched your stream up through the second game. I haven't watched your commentary the, the on the final third game. match. Yeah. Yeah. And so I knew I was, that my I was only... really looking forward to that because I wanted to see the squad yeah. versus squad match to, uh, yeah. Because in my mind, oh, I kind of know the yeah. counter to the squads yeah. is Sloan is squads. And exactly. Yeah. And, but you've mentioned, you've actually mentioned in when you reached out to me on, on, when we talked on Discord, that I guess right now Houston is in a ship heavy meta. So exactly, and so that's why the fire spray works. For, yeah, yeah, um, because without it, yes, and so the, yeah, we're extremely ship heavy. Um, you know, uh, TXO had three uh, significant squad lists out of twenty, um, and all three of those were slow. Uh, and then, other than that, like the highest squad count was like seventy points of squads, um, just intermediate and below. A lot right. of squad lists. Um, pretty similar. Uh, Warzone, we had a few more people start bringing in squads. I think a few, I'm affecting the meta a little bit. I'll keep playing Sloan until they finally start bringing squads. Uh, <laughs> no, I've, I've actually decided to, I've retired Sloanager. 
Um, so this list has been retired. Well, it sounds like it's uh, had no, it's no. had a good run. So there's no it, it has it has nothing left to prove. So yeah, uh, yeah. Um, you know, it, you know, I think a lot of people agree the onager is uh, too cheap or needs adjustments. Yeah, I think I think the test sort. bed. I think the Star Destroy version is just fine. Yeah. at one ten, oh, yeah. it's the same as an ISD one. Um, but the test yeah. bed being under hundred points, that that's really cheap. <laughs> for yeah, kind of yeah. Uh, so you know, engine tests makes it really worse. So maybe they don't need the support team. Maybe you make it more expensive. Um, mm -hmm. I think that uh, I think accuracies should not be used beyond long range. Oh, yeah, that would I actually think be. Should not yeah, yeah, that would be interesting. No, at you can't use actuaries at extreme range, at all. Just that, period. Yeah, I think uh, that would be an. It, that might actually yeah. be a, a good way just to almost solve the onager problem, because that'll make yeah, scatter boats right. immune. It, it's really the. It's um, the, yeah. So, exactly. You don't lose yeah. those evades. You know. All right. Now all the MSUs can be like, yeah, as long as I stay past long, you are not yeah. going to kill me. Like right. I'm going to cancel three dice no matter what. Yeah. Um, and so it it would solve a lot of things. I think. Um, and you know, still, once you get in long, then you start using your accuracies. It's also thematically, you know, it's it's extreme range. How can you be accurate in extreme range? Right, uh, it does make sense that way. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, that that's what I if I had to pitch anything, I'd probably pitch that one um, to kind of bring it. Uh, you know, it makes it also very hard. You know, Sloan works because I can strip one token and then accuracy the other. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I'll almost always veterans my whole pool, fishing for an accuracy. Right. Um, and so, and then that's what makes it really punch is when you can stop two tokens. Um, so, and so one thing I am interested in that if we can just talk more in general about competitive play and metas and such, like you know we mentioned that Houston at least right now is more ship heavy, not squad heavy. But you're um, like I said, Rob and I we we just aren't familiar with the different regions that play. But you mentioned a couple other areas have totally different types of metas where uh, lists that are completely different than the Sloan Onager list have won. It's not just Sloan Onager winning tournaments. Um, people that watch my channel, uh, just want to remind you guys, we've only live streamed two tournaments. <laughs> and uh, um, and yes, they were both Sloan, but they're also both in the same area. They are both Houston in the Houston meta. So I, I personally have no idea what's going on around the country, our country or the world when it comes to Armada meta. Yeah, yeah, I know that, you know, there's a, a little more familiar with like the Canadian and the German meta a little bit just from people online. I know the German meta is pretty famous for um, uh, MSU squad heavy. Uh, so they have like German Sloan that is like uh, Gladiator, uh, Centaur, uh, Desantis, like all little stuff. Oh, um, nice. A yeah, cent and a list they can put the runaway, wow. yeah, runaway Sloan. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, they just <laughs> hit, you know, Gladiator hits real hard and runs away. Senator just runs away. Um, and a lot of that has to do in a in any competition. It's not just about winning, but it's trying to get that bid point spread. Um, yeah. And so you know you don't want to lose bid and you and you want to win bid. Um, and that's kind of the core of of winning. So that's a lot of. Uh, the Onager is one of the reasons is that when it wins, it can win really big. It can table right. a lot of fleets. Um, there are very few fleets I'm super concerned about. Um, and so that that's part of its advantage. Um, now, yeah, exactly. So if someone brings uh, 134 Starhawk, uh, Onager is going to be super sad. Um, yeah. The Onager by itself <laughs> just cannot kill it. There's no possible way. No types of rolling the dice that ever kills and 134 off. points of rebel squads is going to stop a sloan ball even if they just brought yes. only a wings and shara bay sloan sloan ball is done <laughs> so, so so surprisingly that, that's what i decided my only chance was against taylor um and if you watch the mercury stream it has that game as the third game right um, so that, that was the, the next day that we weren't able to watch exactly yeah so that was the the texas finals i guess okay um so the there was three uh LSO, TXO, Warzone, that was the qualifiers, and then the top eight. So it was seeded, but then all the stores were basically reset for the time. I need to watch that on your on Mercury Fleet Command channel. I, I actually want to see how that played out. I haven't had a chance to yeah. watch it yet. but Yeah, you know. and so I, I was only in the top table the last game. Um, mm -hmm. And so I had a really rough game against uh, Alan, uh, started out, uh, and then I went up against uh, a Muni list. Um, I think all Muni T 
uh, March um, and uh, it went really well. I got, I think, a ten-one, and then it was a very, very close fight against Taylorn. Um, but the gist of it, I decided I, I can't shoot the the Starhawk ever. It, it will never win. I can never kill it with the Onager by itself. Right. Um, so I had to just be really super sneaky, try to pop off a few GR75s, um, which never really happened. But I had to win the Squad War, which is very hard with the Fire Sprays. And yes. surprisingly, I did pull it off. Um, and so I think I ended up winning by, like, um, I killed 90 points of his stuff and only lost 60 points of mine. So I got a 30-point um, spread, 6-5. Wow, so that um, sounds a really... I mean... It was an interest. It was. A, yeah. It was all about. You see, I'm kind of. I pointed the onager the other way, away from the Starhawk. Uh, <laughs> Don't even the this Starhawk way. a chance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um. And then we set up all the squadrons, and they kind of lined up in a line to get the perfect jump, and then I dived on him, um, at where I thought would be the best point in time, and I think it was the only time I could have dived on him, and it turned out uh, pretty well. And so it was all about trying to alpha strike stuff. And clean right. up as much as I could before he got back at me. Um, but mostly it was hard because he put all these asteroids in the middle with the um, the worms, and I, I knew that I didn't. I couldn't you know, I give him free I couldn't have the squad fight there. Yeah. If yeah. I had the squad fight there, I would lose. Yeah. He put the he put the little worms where he needs them, and um, and I uh, yeah, that's of course. Um, they would have eaten me to uh, eaten me alive. That is one thing I've noticed with when I've played against Starhawks is I make a choice once I see it and we're all set up. I then decide, all right, am I going to dedicate everything to killing it or am I just going to ignore yep. it? That, that's that's a ship you can't that's a just like to piecemeal. A yeah, you either have to yeah. dedicate everything or just ignore it. Go for the six exactly. five. <laughs> exactly. And, and the other thing is that um, any kill that the Starhawk gets, you gave it to him. Quite yeah. honestly, yeah. Starhawk is speed two. Just don't get in front of it. Yeah. Now that means that you're gonna have to avoid the whole, you know, that whole circle of the board. But uh, you've decided to if you gave it a kill. Um, and yeah, and when you go, you have to go hard. And so you know, I went against Starhawk at the first round of TXO, uh, but it was a Star Starhawk uh, MSU list with a bunch of MC30s and no squads. And so uh, I was yeah. able to just yeah. go hard with all of my squads. And um, I actually shot it twice with the Onager and then ran with the Onager. And turned, right, gotcha. And went around in a big circle um, around it. It never could shoot me in medium range ever. Um, but then the squads just ate it to death. Um, right. And so yeah. he, he was a newer player, though. He you know he gave a good fight, um, but it's a, it's a really hard list. So. I imagine that's probably one of the hardest ships to kill is the Starhawk with a squad screen. Oh, even yeah, more than, exactly. even more than an SSD, I think, because I think a Starhawk's harder to kill than an SSD personally. Yeah, and you, you can't bring a 134 point screen with a SSD. Yeah, really. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, absolutely, it, it's extremely tanky, um, and AJ just gives it so much more. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I'd be curious who takes a Starhawk without a gate. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never seen it. You know, right. I've, I've seen people do a double Starhawk. It's a terrible idea. Don't do it. <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, and so, yeah. And so, you know, in the competitive media, I think you see um, there's a, quite a few lists. You know, there, I think a lot of the 134 point like full squads are really competitive. They just uh, there's a lot of people that just don't care for them, don't like to play them. Um, it really makes the game really long. Um, it made kind of the you know the calculations everyone's doing about how to engage to be really complicated because you've got to be really specific about them. Um, and even you know that's some of the games with Jason and I uh, with our squads kind of dancing becomes very slow play, um, very hard to you know we'll finish round four sometimes jumping around five by the end of the timeout period, um, and so. That, that's part of it. Uh, but, you know, I think they can be really effective. Uh, the issue is a lot of things that are just all fighters. If you go against an all ship list, you've kind of wasted 134 points of. Yeah, you slots. don't have the firepower to. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's um, something my friend and, and, my, my friend and I. Yeah, because you can strip the tokens, but you changed it where you gave it the firepower with yes. bombers. And uh, something my friend Buster and I, you know, just because we like our, you know, military combat history that we tr we translate into the war games we play is that combined arms is always better than over specialization and yes, uh, exactly because then you've got so, one weakness right 
Yeah. Um, as opposed to many. Yeah. 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 And so that you know that's a big part of it is that um, Sloan basically turns all your fighters into bombers um, because you've got seventy five percent chance to hit instead of fifty mm-hmm. um, with a reroll. Um, and uh, she, you know, also makes them much more effective against other fighters. Um, yes. The big thing is being able to you know seeing soon to tell, which is such a good combo, is much more weak against uh, Sloan because I'm going to strip your token for you. Yes, <laughs> you don't you don't get to spend yeah. it and then heal yourself. I'm yeah. gonna eat it. Yeah, um, and so I, I went against Super Tell and it just munched Tell and moved on with my life, um, yeah. where he would have stuck around for an extra round or two if I didn't have. Yeah, um, yeah, so he's great against scatter races and you spend that scatter, yeah. so they have to take the damage. Um, yeah. So, yeah. on on the flip side, I've I've also run uh, like heavy bomber lists. On a, we had an online tournament that I ran a very heavy Y Wing Republic list, um, and you go against squads and they just don't do anything. Um, yeah. They just sit there and die. Um, yeah. And so that's kind of frustrating. You know, I've, I've kind of uh, come to the mind. It's you want four bombers and nothing more. And Everything that, and, else. And that's squad. a good. That's still a lot of firepower. And you exactly. you have a fighter screen to stop enemy squads and let the bombers do their work. I yeah. Mean, well, yeah. And, and that's where you saw. Um, so that last game at Warzone against Jason, his yes. separatist yeah. uh, uh, five hyena list. Um, that got me in a really weird position. You saw that I had to use my squadrons as a screen just so that my ships didn't just instantly die to his hyenas. Right. Um, so, and I couldn't, because of how he planted them on the sta- the mall, I think, in the middle, um, or the station, I don't remember what was in the middle that they were camping on, I couldn't go and jump on them and pin them down. And so instead, I had to plant and try to make a perfect screen, and, and obviously I had holes, and he punched through them. Um, right. Yeah, I think it was so a station. Was very hard. And, <clears throat> so that's interesting. We thought they were the hyenas. Rob and I couldn't tell because it was so no. placed on the screen. We, we were wondering what he was camping on the station. We figured it was the oh, hyenas. Oh yeah. And that was um, every, so you and that can't was, lock him down. That was the whole game. Was how he camped them on. That was something that a lot of people don't think about. The ability to throw things on a station or something is. is Huge. Same thing. Why rift ambush is so good? Because right. um, you can plant there, and they're not going to jump on you. Um, and if they don't have anything that can kill you necessarily, the hyenas have quite a bit of health. Um, then it just puts this huge threat screen. Yeah. That now they you can't lock them down. Yeah. yeah. And you know, maybe I try to dive and I kill one of them, and then those other two are going to jump right over me. Yeah. And put four dice into the side of an onager or a quasar. Right. Um, and so, uh, that was actually pretty close to a list that I was thinking of bringing um, to Warzone instead of Slonager. I've been trying to, you know, what does a heavy hitter combined with a heavy squad screen look like in other factions? You know, without Sloan or without onagers. And so I was flying like a, a Nova Defiant requisite carrier uh, with Martuk and. Um, a muni and a hard sell, um, tons of red dice. Mechanically, it throws more red dice than um, the Sloanager does. More dice at long range, right. uh, but it doesn't have the simplicity. Uh, a little bit so more something I, I did. Yeah, I didn't have the practice to feel comfortable bringing it into a tournament, so I fell back to my Sloanager. Um, yeah. So what I'm actually considering, <clears throat> just because I do like Sloan, she's my second favorite commander, and trying not to bring Thrawn to the Las Vegas Open. Um, is doing Sloan with Defenders. And because, even though I know they're expensive, but I think, because nothing is bad when you roll their dice. Yeah, um, I, in, in the um, investigation of that, um, I'm a software engineer, data scientist guy, so I built a whole spreadsheet analyzing the differences between Defenders and uh, Phantoms and Fire Spray. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I came to decide that the fire spray was just better, yeah. um, because you know the defenders are the same cost but have half the dice. Well, right. You know, only one blue instead of two. Um, and that is so, true. Yeah. 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 You'll strip more tokens, right? So then it, you'll get better. You know, the question is, do you want to do damage or do you want to strip tokens? Right. Um, and so at a certain point, maybe. Uh, Splitting fire sprays and tie fighters is better than a bunch of defenders by themselves. Right, gotcha. Um, and so, yeah, you want just enough to strip the totems that you need, and then for the rest of that, you just want raw firepower and the firepower for the fire spray. It's it's hard to yeah. it, 
It's hard to ignore two blue dice with the bomber keyword. Oh, so good. <laughs> it's That's such so a good. good. <laughs> and the big thing is it's so uh, PDIC um, defended. That was a big reason why they're so good compared to the you know, the regular Sloan, is that PDIC barely reduces fire spray damage. Um, by yeah. you know, reduces it by 25% or something. Yeah. Because, um, you you know, if you get two hits, you're at least getting one in. Yeah. Exactly. They can all yeah, and they're so, only re-rolling yeah. one of your two only dice. Only rolling one dice. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I know we're getting close. we've got about ten minutes left for our hour here, and I wanted to spend the last of this time just to talk about the TTS mod. Um, yeah. What what's your uh, you know you kind of give a little bit of a <clears throat> history and what got you into that, but tell what what made you want to make it and the challenges behind it and. Uh, maybe even yeah, thoughts so, for the future of it, that kind of thing. Yeah, the the reason I made it initially, it's, you know, I've always been a huge Star Wars fan all my life. Um, you know, I kind of heard about the game. Um, I've always wanted to try a game before I play it. Uh, go, go grab it and buy it. Um, especially something like Armada that has so many expansions. It's hard to just dip your toes in Armada. You kind of have yeah. to go bid or, or not. Oh, that's, um, that's what I did. I went, when, I, when I decided, I, I actually... I, I got it for cheap because I went online and found a guy on eBay that was offloading all his stuff. Uh, it was in go. one of the lull periods where Armada was quote unquote dead, and uh, he no. was just getting rid of everything. So I was just like, all right, I'll take everything. <laughs> and but but then yeah. soon after that, I went out and got everything else I didn't have. You know, I just couldn't yeah. just be uh, piecemeal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so you know that's why I made, the the big issue on tabletop simulator is that uh, everything is fifteen degree rotations. And Armada is 22 and a half degree rotations uh, with the maneuvering tool. Uh, so right. fundamentally, uh, you couldn't really play the game without some type of scripting automation for movement. Um, and so, you know, my background is I'm a software engineer. And so that's what kind of dived me into the scripting side of Tabletop Simulator. Um, there was kind of an Armada mod with kind of white box models, but it was pretty much unplayable. Um, there was, you couldn't really physically play the game because it was so finicky yeah. um and so that's what dived me into making the whole mod and uh making all the different uh expansions and stuff you know a lot of the models and stuff i pulled from other sources um and so but i did all the scripting and stuff myself in integration <clears throat> um since then you know i've i've owned every expansion ever released um so I, you know that's what you know having played it and been involved in it you know you know i went bid and got everything um, that that's huge. Uh, how much time does it take to do? I mean, I'm not a programmer. I have a friend of mine who is, so I have a sort of an idea just from what he tells me. But kind of like programming and scripting, how long does it take you? Let's say if, if a new ship um, is released, or uh, I guess like you know you want to make a, an update to the maneuver tool or whatever to maybe make it more precise, or whatever. What what kind of process does that take on the back end? Yeah, so probably a good example was uh, the last um, release. Um, and so, you know, that's something that I probably spent, um, well, I also did a big upgrade. I did a huge amount of upgrade at the end of last year um, where I improved a bunch of different things and added cloud reporting. We've got this database with like 1,500 recorded games uh, in it with scores and lists and stuff. Um, but generally, just to introduce a new expansion or something, you know, I'll put anywhere from 20 to 40 hours uh, oh, wow. importing all those things and configuring them. Um, I think overall, I've spent over 2,000 hours on the mod. Um, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> it yeah. seems like a lot. I don't know if that's a lot yeah. to a programmer, but it seems like a lot to me. <laughs> it's a full well, it's a full man year. Um, yeah. So it's yeah. roughly 2,000 hours in a man year, um, and so that's a lot for a hobby um, over the last five years. Um, so that's a twenty percent of a full time job, right? Um, well, I gotta and, say you know, that always... you know, at least from uh, you know, I, I'm not on there a lot, um, just because for me it just doesn't feel the same as having your own models on the table. Oh, for sure. But, but having it as the resource is such a huge boon to everyone in the Armada community, especially the last couple of years with COVID. Um, yeah. I mean, I just want to, you know, on behalf of everybody, if they haven't, you know, thank you for that, because uh, you know. You're not getting paid. This is a you did it for free, basically. TTS is a free, you know, you pay once and then the mod's free. So it's incredible service you've done to the Armada community for that. So thank you for that. Um, and uh, I'm just curious, do you have any plans in the future for it? Uh, 
barring you know whenever in a couple years if we ever we you know when we start getting expansions again do you have any uh i guess quality of life improvements you've got in the works or planning or anything like that yeah uh part of it is you know i've got this big data store of data and i'd like to make it where that's more accessible to the community um to look into that and, and compare lists and their effectiveness and objectives and uh so that would be something kind of outside of the tool as kind mm -hmm. of a data analytics kind of uh, web tool. Uh, so that's on my list. That'll be a lot of work. Um, uh, there's, of course, always uh, issues and stuff that pop up with uh, TTS that I have to overcome. Um, I've got a list of uh, kind of small feature requests and stuff that we'll see. It's, it's hard to, I, I tend to kind of uh, feast and famine on Right. TTS, uh, I imagine you right. take a break Spike sometimes, like I'm yeah. gonna give myself a break for a few months or whatever, and then then I'm gonna jump back in. So kind of yeah. It, it also is, um, you know, do I play or mod or do I code the mod? And those are kind of one or the other. Right. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. uh, the pretty much the only way I play outside of you know a few tournaments is on TTS. Um, so that's how I practice uh, for all of these tournaments and stuff. Um, there's not a lot of. Uh, play in southeast houston um there's a lot on kind of north side and stuff um but uh it's a long ways away um and so oh that nothing in particular that i you know but you know just a, there's to be some small tweets and stuff i'm hoping to get to very nice well it's it's a fantastic mod i think it's uh you know again thanks it's amazing and also thank you for coming on the channel and just giving us insight into your list that we are able to watch live at the Texas Open and War Zone because I think it was on top table. I think um, five out of the uh, seven battles we saw at least. So it was really cool to see the evolution. Oh. And I'm hoping, you know, someday we might be able to play in person. I don't know if you plan on going to Las Vegas or the. Lo I'm planning yeah, on the Lone Star Open next year. So, oh. but um, hopefully we can play in person sometime. Yeah. And uh, before we sign off, is there anything else you want to say? Kind of like an open question. Anything you want to comment for for anybody that watches my channel? Just let them know. Not really. I, I can't think of off the top of my head. But uh, no, uh, it's, we, it's we, been we, a pleasure. We, I'm glad to yeah. glad to see everyone playing and enjoying, uh, even in these times it's so hard to get in person. Um, so always happy to see that. That's really why I made the mod. Um, and give the opportunity to kind of, uh, you know, I've, I've played against people in Europe and Canada and stuff, opportunities that wouldn't happen, right? right. Um, get outside yeah. of this ship heavy meta, uh, play across the world. Um, and so always happy to see that kind of happen. Well, that's, you know, that's also one of the other big reasons to be able to play with other people across the world that you would never see in your lifetime because, you know, who's going to be able to travel internationally for an Armada game? Exactly. But, Again, thank you, Jesse, for coming on the channel just to give us your insight into your lists, into your mod, into tournament metas. It's been great. Um, and thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, take it easy.